Hey everybody and thanks for joining me this Sunday morning. Last week you saw the vlog we did on our sandbox and I don't know if you could tell but I was actually genuinely excited about the way things were coming together and the opportunities that the sandbox is going to give us plus contractors across the world and hopefully more importantly inspiration for you guys. Here's the thing I didn't tell you. The reason I'm so so genuinely excited is because it takes me down memory lane. One of my major passions working here at Aqua was the opportunity to build something at the Chicago Flower and Garden Show. And the reason I loved the Chicago and Flower and Garden Show so much was because I was never restricted on any type of design. I could come up with anything I wanted. Nobody said you could or could not do this. So I always pushed myself and my imagination as far as I possibly could. The other reason I liked it was not just because I got to stretch my imagination, but it kind of knocked the dust off of our boots. You know, we're definitely a seasonal company where working out here in Chicago and come early December, late December, we stop building and we don't pick back up again, usually until about May after our spring cleanouts in April. So the Flower and Garden Show allowed us the opportunity to actually jump into the season, knock off the dust off the boots, get everybody pumped for the season, inspired for what was about to come. And so now, after a couple years of not doing the Flower and Garden Show, I get to do that again. I thought I'd take you guys back down memory lane with me and look at some of those memorable moments from the Flower and Garden Show. I'm Brian. And I'm Ed. And we work for Aquascape Designs. The largest water feature in des water, uh, water feature design. If you can dream company. it, we can build it. <laughs> so in 2010, we built probably the largest booth the Flower and Garden Show has ever seen. It was 195 feet by, I think it was like 85 or 95 feet wide. To give you perspective of size, this booth over here is about 40 by 60. And the thing I remember most about that 2010 booth was that it almost killed us. That was a huge undertaking to build something in a booth space that big in eight days. It really pushed us to what we knew our limits were. So once we built that, we knew we could do almost anything as long as it was in a smaller booth. The dramatic change on that booth was pretty epic. You know, we had a hundred foot some stream in there. We built a pond very similar to the one that I personally live with, with a vanishing edge and the rainwater harvesting system. And so it was a huge undertaking. The following year, we decided to dumb it down a little bit and we went back to basics. Remember, if 2008 the economy had changed so people weren't buying big giant water features and stuff we really wanted to showcase some smaller water features but what I remember most about the 2011 booth was the sunken patio and this is where I start getting excited because we had never done sunken patios before and to try to do sunken patios for customers now I would have had nearly the confidence to design it or take on a project like that unless I practiced at the flower and garden show so the flower and garden show actually allowed us to practice a lot and experiment on ourselves or with ourselves rather than with paying customers. So that booth was pretty incredible. I also started really paying attention to maybe the psychology and how people interact with ponds. When you build these big giant displays, you get to watch thousands. In fact, I think it's someplace around 60,000 people come through and how do they interact with it? And so we coined the term fish feeding rock back then and we watched everybody walk up to this one destination fish feeding rock to feed the fish. And then we really started incorporating that into a lot of our designs. Let's jump ahead to 2012. Now 2012, the main reason it was memorable to me, one term, the tree pergola. We had this vision, we wanted to build a pergola. I wanted to do something different with a pergola. And I remember driving home one day and a storm had come through and knocked over a bunch of trees. In fact, it was a little microburst tornado and it had knocked over a bunch of trees. And I thought to myself, how awesome would it be to save the root flares of those things for driftwood type pieces and unique things inside of a pond and then as my imagination started going a little further I said what if we could save the whole tree and create a pergola out of that and so we created a tree pergola where part of it actually went inside of the pond we also had some really unique features in there we had like a timber wall that gave us some privacy we had designed a little shed and actually had a mason come out and these are the extenses we went to to create realistic displays but we actually had a mason come out do a stone veneer on our shed and then we put a grass roof on top of it and little secret to you guys the whole purpose of that shed 
was just a place where we could store literature and our coats. But we needed a place to put that stuff. So I designed it right in the middle of the booth. It was a serious attention getter. We also put in a bubbling rock that disappeared into a permeable patio. So we learned how that water, when it hits a patio, how it migrates through those permeable joints into a patio. I also remember having Semco Stone cut us a countertop and put a little bowl in it where the bowl actually vanished over the side. So check that out. The most important thing I remember about that entire booth is we were able to sell the entire booth to a single customer. He wanted the tree pergola, he wanted the shed, he wanted that water table, he wanted everything. He basically wanted us to take that thing, pick it up and put it in his yard. So we move forward to 2013. 2013 was the show that kind of made us famous out there. The theme was music in the garden and I took it literal and said, what if we could get a piano that actually had water coming out of it? And if I could figure out how to get a piano to get water out of it, could I get some trombones or trumpets and created a pretty epic space. Now every year after that, we realized that the attention getter was really important. So the attention getter was always something out in front of our booth that drew people in. It wasn't necessarily realistic because I'll tell you, plumbing a grand piano and having water pour out over the keys is not something that we can do for everybody. In fact, it's quite challenging, but it looked cool and it was ex extremely memorable. After we had built that every year after, people were looking for us and what creative thing we were gonna come up with next. That year was fantastic. It also had all kinds of other stuff. We did that branch arbor. I just remember thinking, we built that tree pergola the year before and I wanted to do something with an arbor, but I figured if we cut a thousand branches down, in fact, I think it was like 10,000 branches, could we build a big arbor as it swept over through? So everybody walked through that area. We actually suspended branches with fishing lines so it looked like it kind of blew in which was really cool. That led you over to our man cave. First time we actually did a destination spot for all the husbands where they could kind of hang out, chill, look at the giant waterfall from inside. As you guys know how important that view is. You moved around and then you went through an 85 foot long bridge that serpentined back and forth over the pond, which was an epic feat because we had to pre-build everything. In order to build these giant displays in eight days, so much of the construction happened here at our office rather than at Navy Pier over there. Let's go to 2014. So 2014, I think I felt the same courage that I did in 2010 and decided to take on a pretty big booth again. I think after a few years, kind of figured out how the show was working, how things were running, what we were capable of again, had improved efficiencies, and decided to go with something really big. I don't think we would ever do that again, just the same as I felt in 2010, but 2014 nonetheless was pretty memorable. What would be the most memorable part is a giant tea house. The tea house was awesome. It was really, really cool. Gave people an unbelievable respect over the pond. We got that water to come right up to it. But my favorite parts over the size of that pond and everything else were the detailed type things we did. We built a really, really cool table out of cedar two by fours just sandwiched together. Water kind of moved through a trough that we put in there, disappeared into a pondless reservoir of sorts, right into the floor. I also remember putting in a bowl with um, like a, just a fogger inside of it and just etched it into an existing wall to show people that you don't have to have a giant pond to make a huge statement in your yard. A simple little bowl with water coming over the top adds a huge impact as long as it's tastefully done. So there was all kinds of great things. We always do like weird structures and stuff. We did what we call tree pergolas. So they were single post pergolas with more of a branching type structure on top. And we kind of spotted them around all over the place with the idea of just making a patio feel a whole lot more intimate. But check out that year. In fact, if you guys wanna check out any of these videos for the full duration, just type in Flower and Garden Show Aqua and they'll all be listed in there. So I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, maybe I'll take you down memory lane a little bit more some other time. But tell me what your favorite part is. Which booth did you love the best? What was the single favorite item you loved there? More importantly, hopefully, this gives us a newfound inspiration for what we can create in our new sandbox. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Comment, share. Just comment and share. Just comment and share. Thank you, bye.